OK, I'm going to try working with sheet metal and see how this goes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is select sheet metal from the drop down list. Um, and as noted in Alessio's tutorial, you'll see um, that I've got slightly different options now to the options I had before when I was working with um, um, solid modeling. So sheet metal, slightly different behavior from solid modeling because we're trying to cut everything out of one thickness of material. Um, so let's begin a new sketch and uh, we're going to sketch on this face here. And I want a rectangle that measures uh, 20 by 80. And it looks like it's, uh, well, um, just looking at this tutorial, the uh, um, rectangle isn't aligned in any way with the coordinate system, so I'll stick to that. And I've got uh, an 80 by 20 rectangle. And in the tutorial that I'm reading, it says it's been purposely disassociated from the origin point. So same thing I've just done. We didn't make it centered on there or anything. Um, OK. Um, so the next part that we're going to do is uh, involves constraints. I'm going to use the coincident constraint on the origin and I'd like to try and find the halfway point of this line here but at the moment I can't. Um, I'm just going to escape for a second uh, I, I'm interested, I feel like I'd like to be able to find a point somewhere on there. Um, what I can do to make that work, I can probably construct a point um, Okay, let's not do that. That's not helping. Um, on the sketch option, I can add a point. Sorry, I was adding in a point in three dimensions rather than a point in two dimensions. Uh, that's going to put it on the line. And then what I can do is to include a dimension which says from there to there should be 40. And now I've got a point that's halfway up that line. And now I can do what I was going to do in the first place, which is to make that point and there concentric and as noted everything has gone from blue to black so the sketch is fully constrained. Uh, good. I guess maybe um, I might come to regret this but it looks to me actually like on the original sketch there was a line across the middle of the part there um, so I'm going to stick with that. Okay um, create the first piece of sheet metal in the create tab select the flange option uh, I guess I yeah I was done with that sketch so I've now finished that sketch and uh, then in fact let's just go back and say stop sketch just so I'm clear on that create flange uh, click on both halves of the rectangle select uh, steel as the material has happened automatically there's steel there um, and we want it in millimeters so th that's fine that's the default and I'll click OK um, next change the default thickness of the material so in the modify tab uh, we want sheet metal rules and um, I guess it's this one here has various options underneath it and um, it says click on the icon that looks like a pen. So this icon here um, allows me to change various properties and we're going to make the thickness uh, 0.8 millimeters and say save. And actually I can close that all together. Good, so that is uh, looking fine. Uh, 
next create flange click on the underside of the rectangle and click and drag the blue arrow that appears a distance of uh, 30 millimeters so I guess what we're clicking is this edge here uh, and there's a blue arrow and we drag that a distance of 30 millimeters so you'll need to be a bit aware of the difference between clicking faces and the clicking edges and there what we were clicking was specifically an edge um, and then it says ensure that the angle is set to 90 degrees which is fine and leave everything else as it is so I can click OK and I can check that my uh, flange there looks like what was in the tutorial um, next create the side of the part continued uh, we're going to create a new sketch on that flange and um, this might take a bit of time but um, let's go uh, let's just get on with doing this sketch um, so first of all I've got a circle uh, circle center diameter circle um, somewhere over here and it's diameter 3 and then um, I'm going to use shift uh, not even shift actually sorry just D for dimension and um, from there to the edge is 16.5 from there to that edge is 10 uh, good so that center is now fully located um, I'll do another circle sorry sketch circle center diameter circle um, and what I want is that it meets on there so it's a diameter of 20 um, that looks fine and then um, there's one more circle that I'm actually going to do uh, center diameter circle and this is down as having a radius of 12 so I'm going to make it a diameter of 24 just um, to make that nice and simple so that looks good and now I'll do the wheel on the other side again um, I think we can assume all the dimensions are going to be pretty similar so I will stick that at 3 and space it 10 from the front edge uh, nice sort of uh, done that automatically by mistake okay and 10 from there that's looking quite nice um, next I'll have another circle center diameter circle I guess I could it looks like I could be using C to do that um, so maybe I'll do that in future and I am happy with that uh, next there's some straight lines to be drawn one of them goes from here and it goes horizontally and it is 20 millimeters long and uh, again if I just do a dimension from there to there is 7.5 so that looks good uh, next I want a line which goes from this edge onto the circle and the dimension from there to there is 15 that looks good um, now just trying to find the next one. Oh, okay. Uh, so there is another line which comes along like that. I'm going to have to trim this in the end, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, and that line is 20 millimeters from the top here. Uh, good. Happy with that. I could now, uh, just to keep everything tidy, I can trim off. Uh, that bit of the circle and that bit of the circle and that bit of the circle and I'm just going to move that um, there to keep it well yeah that's 
fine. Um, so that now looks good. And then the last thing that I've got to do in terms of creating lines uh, is to do that uh, somewhere. I just want to make sure it joins up on there. And there's a dimension to put in, which is that that angle, I oh, got it pretty close, should be 120. And I think I can do one more bit of trimming, which is that I don't need that bit of line there. Um, so I'm now somewhat happy with all of that. Um, it looks like I need another line from here to here, horizontal, and that dimension is 12. And then there's a further line above it here. And as it stands, I can't actually see what the dimension is between there and there. Um, so if that's 2.4, I'm going to make it 2.5. Um, I don't feel... Oh, um, sorry, it's it's slightly clearer elsewhere. I'm going to make that 2 because then what I can do... Um, in a way, on the tutorial, this it's helpful here to look at the three-dimensional model as well as the two-dimensional model. There's another... Um, uh, sort of in, um, section joining the the wheel shape to the to the general flange shape here, and that helps me because that is marked as being um, two millimeters wide. So I'm going to make it exactly two millimeters wide like so. And that means, I guess, that this one here should also be two millimetres. Um, so that looks fine. Same kind of thing over here. And what I want, if that's 16.5, then this dimension should, I guess, be 15.5. And that dimension there is 2. And finally um, there is another line which goes from here to here and um, I guess the idea here is that that should be vertically constrained um, well, let's do that point and that point should be vertically constrained. That looks fine. Um, and then I can do a final line somewhere here. And again, I'm using D to uh, put in dimensions quite quickly, but you can also go sketch. Um, where am I looking? Sketch dimension. Add it there. So you can use your keyboard or not, depending on which you prefer. That looks fine now. I'm happy with that. And finally, um, there is a cutout bit up here, which I'll do. So we want a vertical line somewhere there. And that vertical line needs to be 28.5 uh, in from the end. and three long. There we go. Uh, next there is... Oh, well, let's do it the other way, which is to put in another line somewhere over here. Again, that one's going to be three long. And the dimension between there and there is 23. Okay, that looks fine. Um, now I need a center point 
arc perhaps or actually I'll do a tangent arc from there and it should be six uh, radius that looks fine and I'm hoping that I can do a horizontal line uh, there there's no distance specified so I'll just do a random horizontal line uh, I'm just going to make sure I've got a tangent from this to this uh, that's fine and then um, I can drag that out a bit and finally sketch from here Uh, sorry, sketch a line from here down to here. And the important thing that's given to us is that that angle should be 135. So finally, I can again trim a bit. I don't need. Sorry, I want to trim that bit of the line there. OK, and that looks to me now like I've got everything I wanted. Um, I'm pretty happy with that um, sketch. And again, what I'm just doing is checking it against the three-dimensional model to make sure that that looks fine too, which I think it does. Uh, I'm going to hit stop sketch. I can always come back and edit it later if I decide I don't like it for some reason. Um, OK. Next, it says we want to complete this side of the part. So in the Create tab, choose Extrude. Uh, choose the sections highlighted in blue. Uh, that looks to me like those ones and that and that and that and that and that and that. Um, and what we can do is to uh, preview that cut. Um, and I think that's coming out roughly like I want it to. So I'm going to hit, in fact, um, instead of uh, distance, I'm just going to say all. So it just cuts everything away and then I can click OK. And that looks kind of, ah. Uh, the, the, I was going to say it looks exactly like I wanted it to. It nearly does, but I don't have holes in the middle of these wheels. So I can just go back and edit that feature and add in, I hope, that and that. And now when I click OK, I've got the holes in the middle of the wheels, which is what I wanted. Good. Uh, so um, that is... Um, looking nice so far. Next up, we want to mirror all of that. So create, mirror, and we want to mirror bodies. And the body that we want to mirror is that one there. And the mirror plane that we want, um, I guess it's going to be helpful if I can see these planes. So I'll just click there. I think I can click for the mirror plane, that one. Um, and um, that's what I want, so I'm going to click OK. Uh, just to be clear, what I was doing was toggling on and off. Sometimes, most of the time when you're modeling, you don't want to see like the origin and the X, Y, and Z directions and the planes and things. But sometimes you do, for example, to mirror about them. Um, so you can turn them on and off with that light bulb toggle there. Uh, next combine the two halves into one part. Um, so we're going to switch back into the modeling window here. And we've got two bodies at the moment, but what we can do, um, we did some of this in the sculpting tutorial as well, is uh, modify combine. Uh, one half is the target body, one half is the tool body, and we want to join them and we don't particularly need to make it a new uh, a new component or keep the tools so I'm just going to say okay and now you can see we've got one body which is the thing that we wanted to have um, and there's no split down the middle I can't see the middle of those uh, options 
Uh, now we switch back to sheet metal so we can keep going with the sheet metal work. Um, and um, the next thing that we're going to do is just uh, have a look at the flat pattern. So that's this up. In fact, I might just uh, save this first. Um, I'll make a new project called Sheet Metal and I'll call this uh, Sheet Metal Tutorial 1. Uh, save. And uh, so now we're going to go modify create flat pattern um, and uh, that's going to be our stationary face, the front bonnet. And I click OK. And there we go. Um, that is the um, shape we would have to cut out in order to make this um, object. And then uh, we'd have to fold on these various lines here, which kind of makes sense. So you can always go back and have a look at that and check whether it's doing what you expect it to. And I can click uh, exit flat pattern. We go back to the 3D look at things. Create the front windscreen. So now um, in the create tab select flange and again what we want to do is think carefully about edges. i um, just going to zoom right in. I can't select a face for a flange. Uh, I couldn't select the bonnet. I couldn't select there. It has to be an edge, um, a line rather than a plane, I suppose, if you want to think about it that way. And it's this edge here that I want. Um, and what we're going to do, I can drag that up and uh, I'm told to set it to 16 millimeters. And then this time we're going to want to change the angle to 60 degrees. And again, at this stage, you just want to have a look and think, is that what I meant? Um, and it is, that looks to me perfectly like a windscreen. So I'm happy with that. So, um, leave the height datum to outer faces, change the bend position to adjacent. Um, you might want to look at exactly what that means. It's to do with ex how the bend is specified. Um, let's just change it back and see. Yeah, what, what to look at is this corner here at the moment because of the way the bend works, we've actually sort of cut away a bit uh, here that's going to leave us a sharp corner that we don't want. But if I just change, if you keep an eye on what's happening in and around that section, when I change this to adjacent, you can see now we haven't taken away any of the material here. We've kind of deliberately left enough material that our bend is formed of the the cutout bit, not of the original bonnet, I suppose, is a way of thinking about it. Um, so that kind of helps. And so I can click OK. And then it says sketch two rectangles on here. So we'll do that. Um, let me just make sure I'm getting the dimensions right. They are um, 10 by 14.65 like so um, and if I just do some more dimensions now they are not quite sure why that didn't come up first time but they are 2.5 in from the edge and 2.5 in from the top uh, like so and then um, I want another one of these I could if I wanted mirror about that central line there but I think I'll just draw a second one sometimes it's just as easy as mirroring um, uh, um, what was happening there I'd sort of locked onto something height-wise, but I wasn't sure it was right, uh, and I wanted to get it right. I'm not quite sure why I'm seeing this at 10.212. If I go to 10, that looks all right. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just 
there are different ways to make sure when you're doing sketching like this that you're um, getting this window aligned with this window, the two windows aligned. Either I could have deliberately drawn this so it was nowhere near aligned and then used all these constraints on the right hand side or I could make sure that I'm aligning it right from the start. I'm reasonably happy that that corner there and that corner there are vertically aligned. I guess I could put in a constraint on that anyway to say that point and that point should be vertically aligned. And that's worked fine. Um, and I guess I could do the same here. That point and that point. Oh, um, okay. So what happened there? We've already got a height specified on this um, object and this line is fixed in space so actually you can see the bottom line here is also fixed in space um, so I s slightly over specified things. Um, I'll stop fiddling around with this now and I'll just uh, put it in with the dimensions that I want uh, which is that that should be 2.5 and now I'm reasonably happy that that front windscreen is about right um, and I can create an extrusion uh, and I'm going to say extrude cut to the back of the windscreen there. Uh, again there are different ways you could specify that extrusion but um, that's I think um, just a, a good way of doing it. Okay um, so I think I'm done with that sheet now, uh, creating the front grille uh, in the Create tab, select the flange option. You can probably see how much of this is going to work. Uh, select the front edge of the bonnet. I think it's going to be that one there. And we pull it down. Um, and we want that to be 18, I think. And the angle, we're told, is 80. And leave the height datum, but make the angle adjacent. And we say OK. And that looks fine. Uh, next, we're going to sketch on the front grill. Um, I guess it looks like this sketch on the front grill is going to be symmetric. Um, so, what I'm going to do is. Um, make a line down here like that, uh, make it 30 like so and then I'm just going to make that a construction line um, not sure that's worked sorry I was doing it in the wrong order so that's made it a construction line I clicked on the line and then clicked on construction and now what that gives me is uh, this will I'll be able to mirror about that line there if I need to. Um, OK, first let's put on um, some circles, center diameter circles. We don't really have a grid to work from here. This has a diameter of six. Uh, just need to make sure that uh, this one shouldn't be a construction circle and I don't want to be in construction mode anymore. Um, next, I just need to be careful with these dimensions. From the centre to that edge there needs to be 5 I think and from the centre to that edge there needs to be 7.5. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and that's gone black which means it's fully specified. Uh, there's a second circle somewhere here and um, again let's put in some dimensions that dimension there is 10 that looks okay yep uh, and that dimension there is 4 Uh, good. Okay. Next, um, we'll go with a straight line up from here, and the length of that straight line we don't know, 
but it then has a um, a 45 degree bend that's going to come out as 135 there you could if you wanted specify it um, um, you, you could specify it as being 45 degrees to the vertical if you prefer but 135 and 45 are I don't know conjugate or whatever you call that thing um, the next thing is that there is a dimension given which is from there to there should be 10 uh, sorry not 105 10.5 and from there to there should be uh, 5 uh, that's kind of interesting that's not quite worked um, Uh, maybe at this stage um, I'm going to make that 5 and um, what's strange is that I don't have a dimension yet on here but it's kind of assumed a dimension for some reason um, alright I'm going to uh, control Z on quite a lot of this and get right back to the start so now I've just got that line and I can do this piece by piece maybe because it didn't seem to work doing it in a hurry um, so we will go like this and that's five and then I will uh, sketch a line which goes up there and it's important hang on a minute we've ended up with two lines there sketch a line which goes up there and the only thing that I'm going to say is important is it should be coincident so it meets that um, and now another thing that I can do is to say that um, uh, the angle between here and here should be 45 degrees and then finally what I can do is say the length from there to there should be 10.5 and now that's worked all right um, that looks fine and, and everything's turned black and we've got an enclosed shape that I can work with so that looks good so the last thing left to do are the slots on the front grille um, I might be able to create it as an actual slot center to center slot that looks kind of like the thing I want uh, so let's just try that um, the total height is 8 that's correct and um, the width needs to be 2 uh, so I'm gonna say that should be okay let's just check if uh, if I've got that right yeah that's two okay fine um, so that's how the slot tool works roughly and then we need to um, specify another dimension which is this one and that needs to be four um, I can't see on this drawing immediately uh, where um, what that dimension is um, so I'm gonna make it um, I guess I want it to be about sort of halfway between the middle and the okay well six is too much four looks fine uh, let's stick with that for the time being and see where we get to Um, and now I want to take everything that I've drawn sorry there's something that's still not locked in place ah okay so we do still need to specify that the width there should be 2 and that looks better uh, not quite sure I don't know why that point there 
seems to be free to move ah okay well that's why so what I was doing there is just going through looking um, at all the places where the sketch was still blue and trying to make it not be blue anymore but to turn black which means we've fully specified where it goes um, so there you go that's what I was doing um, next on the sketch options I can mirror this whole sketch if I do that um, then I get the four things I've just created and I can mirror them about that line there and click OK and that's kind of all worked out fine and then lastly I need one more slot which crosses the mirror line so I was sort of deliberately saving that till last um, I'm just gonna put this like that um, because uh, finally I can align that point with that point actually just for slight precision I'm gonna align with the side that I created not the side I mirrored but you know it doesn't really matter and align there and now I think that is the correct front grille um, so lots of different ways to to do that but um, that's how I've done it and we can say stop sketch and uh, modify uh, sorry create extrude um, and I guess maybe again I can use extrude to uh, this face here and then um, it'll cut through all of that I could have gone I could have done that in other ways as well um, and play around and see what works okay that looks pretty nice I'm a bit confused that my um, Jeep with this 80 degree angle on this flange uh, doesn't quite look like the Jeep in the tutorial and if anything I prefer the Jeep in the tutorial um, let's just check that flange I mean it may be what happens if I make that a hundred degrees no that looks even worse okay well let's stick with 80 okay um, you could play around with that maybe it might start to look more or less like you want it to but I'm gonna leave that because I think I've followed the instructions all right uh, finishing the front grill create another flange and we want to select that edge there and pull it out um, a distance of six millimeters uh, and I didn't quite finish all the instructions there so I can say edit feature um, um, and we're told to change this option to two offset and then both the offsets are going to be two millimeters um, so you can see that's just me what's changed is that this bit here sticks out two millimeters and that bit there sticks out two millimeters um, everything else we leave okay uh, we still want the bend position to be adjacent and we can say okay so that's looking good Um, create the back of this uh, create a flange uh, you should now be starting to feel this is a familiar process we hope um, we want 15 millimeters and uh, we can say okay on that sketch on there and we'll create some center diameter circles you can actually see it somewhere it would pick up those circles I mean we don't want to do that so don't but it's interesting that it's available um, so I'll just create a circle and then start dimensioning it uh, we want the diameter to be four distance to there to be uh, four and distance to there to be nine 
and I'll do another circle which I think is directly below having some difficulty getting this not to snap to various things so I'm going to create it and then um, choose the things that I do want to constrain it to so I'm going to constrain it like that so it's vertically aligned and then uh, we're given that a dimension sorry so I want a dimension from there to there that's working okay and that should be four I don't know why that is saying D74 4.44 that's not a helpful thing um, it seems to have kind of frozen somewhere on the screen um, but anyway I, I won't worry about it I'm sure when I finish this sketch it'll disappear um, so we've got those two circles where we want them now what I can actually do again is to create a construction line like that and then just make sure that um, if I click on that line make it construction and then I can take uh, create within the sketch I want to mirror uh, that circle and that circle and I want to mirror them about that line and I can say OK um, and that looks pretty good so I'm going to stop that sketch create extrude uh, extrude those four circles and again I will extrude as far as the rear face there okay and let's keep going uh, create a flange uh, on that edge there pull it out a bit hmm, there's something about it causing an error um, I didn't look very carefully at where I was creating that flange so I might just do it again and this time be uh, sorry be a bit more precise about it we'll zoom in nice and close and I'll create flange on that face there drag that out I mean it's weird it says it's failing to compute the flange profile but it's showing the flange profile um, we want to drag it out four millimeters I've done that again without really meaning to and now we're gonna say here to offset and the offsets this time are minus four and uh, minus 26 so you can see what we're really doing is um, those offsets tell you whether it's the full width that the flange runs along or um, some fraction of the width uh, and I'm going to try clicking OK and see if that works yeah, it seems to work fine um, one thing that's happened we've got this um, like little notch either side of the step I'm not going to worry about that but you know if you did I think you could correct it by changing the way the bend is defined so there are always options in these things um, and then it says finally in the create tab select mirror and mirror that last uh, feature so if we go features and I select that then we need to choose a mirror plane and the mirror plane is that one there and I can hit OK and now we've got two steps at the back and I can turn off those planes again so I don't need to see them um, okay so what we want to do finally is um, add some uh, fillets on any sharp corners so modify fillet um, and I guess you know things like this uh, let's just make that one millimeter uh, there for some reason it's not letting uh, okay I'll do them one by one I thought I could do a bunch at a time but um, 
let's do that one um, I guess on the front there are going to be some nasty corners okay so this is how I'll do it millimeter I'll click OK just keep sort of looking to see if there's anything that looks nasty uh, there's, there's some on the back here um, uh, make all of them one millimeter and click OK I guess these steps again are places where you could end up having a bit of a nasty scratch and make all of those one millimeter and click OK and now that's starting to look a bit less uh, dangerous I can't see too many um, pointy corners oh, actually one more set there And there must be a matching one on the other side. We'll make them one millimeter. Okay, that looks kind of nice. Um, activate the uh, flat pattern. To do that, what we're going to do is just click on this button here. And now you can see that's the uh, metal that we need to cut out to create this. Um, I'm just going to save, call it the user save version, that's fine, um, and from the flat pattern select the uh, drawing from design option. Uh, okay, where are we going to get that? Um, sorry, it's from the drop-down list, so drawing from design. Um, use a scale of 1 to 2. Um, I don't see any option to scale at the moment. Um, so we'll just hit OK. See how this goes. It's still thinking slowly. Uh, yep. So we have to be a bit patient. Uh, I'm just going to change the scale there to make it uh, 1 to 2 seems like it's not going to fill that page. Um, I'm just going to try 2 to 1 instead. And we want to rotate it 90 degrees. I'll place it there. Um, I'm going to say OK, see how this goes, and then um, uh, where is the option to rotate, uh, modify, rotate, um, ah, OK. Let's try again. Uh, modify, rotate, and then it says, well, what point do you want to rotate it around? So that's kind of the point that's going to stay still. Let's try that point there. And we will try and do uh, 90. And that's come out pretty all right. That's kind of, I'm happy with how things look there. Um, you can add in dimensions, of course. 
Um, so, you know, I can add in that, um, for example, this should be radius 10, uh, this should be radius, or let's uh, instead say uh, this width here is 36.8. Uh, and then you can go through adding in all of those dimensions. I won't do it just now. Um, editing the title block. Um, I haven't done this in Fusion, so I'm just going to take a second to find out how I do that. It's pretty straightforward. I right click and I say edit title block. Um, And now what I can do, I guess, um, ah, okay, so that isn't really what I wanted because that is uh, changing the actual content of that. What I want to do is just to um, fill in the boxes. Let me just pause again. Well, I haven't really got to the bottom of this, but um, if I edit the title block, I have at least found that I can um, change this and start typing in details here. Um, I don't really mind about that. Um, uh, proved by, um, well, you, you can see, uh, I'm not going to fill in too much detail here. Sheet metal Jeep. And um, if I hit return, I can delete both of those titles. Uh, I'm not really worried about who approved it. Um, I'm not really worried about document status or document type. Um, and I guess this is drawing number one. Um, maybe if I make that 3.5 millimeters, it'll fit in its box better. Um, this is 11 to 2019. I'll call this sheet one for no particular reason, and I'll call this revision one. And we'll say finish edit. So, <laughs> and everything disappears. Okay, well, uh, don't take this as a tutorial on how to do uh, two-dimensional drawings. Um, but um, that is how you end up making the two-dimensional drawing of it and certainly you know specifying the thing that needs to be cut out this can be a useful step uh, I'm just going to go back and um, the last thing that was uh, that was suggested was have a go at rendering the part so let's do that um, if we say render, um, the suggestion is we could um, make the physical material uh, satin steel. Is that an option? Uh, I think it, it might be steel, comma, satin or something. Um, um, no, maybe that's a finish um, in any case. Uh, let's go with something um, exciting like chrome, chrome steel um, and I'll just do the setup background color. It always gives you a slightly boring gray. Um, Let's make it a slightly more interesting green. Somewhere there. It's a little bit garish, isn't it? Let's go slightly paler. Uh, OK. And the suggestion is we have the ground plane on. Position 20 degrees, focal length 83. Uh, I mean, you can play around with all of these things, obviously. Uh, I'll say close. And I'll zoom in a bit, and then I will just uh, do an in-canvas render on that. Uh, 
and for some reason we always get this slight graininess on the in-canvas renders uh, but you can see it's starting to look quite nice you could also add your um, initials to that of course that's one of the things we've been talking about a bit um, I wonder what happens if I do an out of canvas render Uh, I have a feeling my university license won't let me do oh I guess if I do uh, standard render quality maybe it'll work better I've done the classic thing here of clicking too many things at once and uh, now um, nothing's gonna work <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> don't do what I do there. Um, okay, so now that might work or it might not. Um, okay, I'm going to stop the tutorial because I've managed to make my fusion crash by trying to do an in canvas render and uh, a cloud render all at the same time. Uh, but that's how you do sheet metal. That's how you do uh, this Jeep in sheet metal. Good luck. Have fun.